Weberman. This dude is in my opinion one of the most well-designed DFC characters. A lot of characters have neat perks, but ultimately end up playing the game very similar to the way that Wilson does. Weber is not one of them. I mean, you technically can play Weber the same as Wilson, but his access to spiders with various different abilities grants him a totally different playstyle when it comes to combat. Based on my DSD player tier list video, an S tier player is capable of rushing the ruins and beating at least 3 raid bosses before day 30. One of the previous videos on this channel went over how to do this using Wes on an ornery B flow, so you could just do the same thing except with Weber. However, that's not only less fun, but it's way less effective, since with the right army and tactics, Weber can breeze through the ruins and annihilate most of the raid bosses in the game. So for those of you who want to steamroll the game with spiders, stick around as I explain how to be an S tier Weber. Before we start, I should clarify that I wouldn't consider this a beginner friendly guide. I'm going to assume that you know most of the basics about Weber, or the game in general. If you don't, I'd suggest watching a beard video. If you're more pressed for time, you should watch Pogsar TXE's short called Everything You Need to Know About Weber. I've also covered the basics and benefits of beeflow taming, as well as general information about raid bosses in my previous videos. So instead of just repeating the information again, I will just refer you to those resources whenever the subject comes up. With that out of the way, let's get into the guide. When rushing all these things as Weber, your start is going to be almost identical to rushing it with Wes. Since we're fighting the shadow chess pieces on day 21, we're going to have to rush a beeflow. So do exactly what I did in my S tier Wes video. Get a bunch of grass and twigs, head to the mosaic, Bind a bunch of rocks until you have at least 11 gold, chop down 2 trees, and find the beef flow. You do want to hammer pig houses along the way, but you're going to have to be careful since you're playing as Weber, so pigmen will attack you on sight. Because of this, I wouldn't hammer every pig house I see since you'll end up wasting a bunch of time fighting pigs. Instead, hammer at least 2 since that will give you enough pigskin to make the beef flow saddle. Once you find the beef flow, feed it a bunch until it's night, and then go back and shave the other beef flow to obtain the 4 beef flow wool you need for the saddle. Once you have the ingredients for the saddle, Make an alchemy engine and make the saddle. You should also make a football helmet if you have the pixin for it. If not, you can now go and hammer another house, now that you got your beeflow. You also want to explore one cave entrance in order to get the light bulbs that are required for a lantern. Once you have the lantern, the saddle, and the football helmet, you're ready to begin exploring the map. You're going to be looking out for a few things. The first is obviously the suspicious marble and their set piece. The second thing that you'll need to find is a touchstone. Not only will touchstones give you 8 pigskin without the hassle of fighting pigmen, but you're going to have to use it in order to obtain the nurse spider. While you travel, you should try and find a location with lots of spider dens, because you're going to need a lot of monster meat and silk in this run. Some side quests that you'll eventually need to complete are finding the pan flute and picking up the terrarium. You can hold off on doing both of these things until winter, but unless the terrarium is being guarded by pigmen, it's better to bring those items back to your base when you find them, instead of having to backtrack later. Unlike Wes and Wendy, once you assemble the chest pieces, you can abandon your beeflow because you technically don't need it for the rest of the run. However, by the time you've assembled the pieces, your beeflow is probably over 25% tamed. Weber doesn't really need the beeflow for combat, but you're still giving up super speed and the ability to use the piggyback without penalty, so I personally would keep it. Anyway, the next thing you want to do is get nurse spiders. Nurses are probably the best spiders in the game. Along with the spider warrior and dangling depth dweller, they have the highest HP out of all spiders that Weber can befriend. What makes them so good is their healing ability. When attacking something, the nurse spider will jump into the air and heal all spiders in an AoE for 150 HP, as well as healing Weber himself for 8. A few nurse spiders can make an army of spider variants virtually unkillable to many of the threats in the game. They also eliminate the need for Weber to heal himself, since he's getting tons of HP from nurse spiders whenever his army is fighting something. Nurses only spawn from spider queens and spider queens only spawn from tier 3 dens. Usually you'd have to wait until it's winter for tier 3 dens to turn into spider queens, but tier 3 dens have a 10% chance of instantly spawning a spider queen whenever they are haunted by a ghost. This is why I said that you want to locate a touchstone and get at least 25 silk. You want to plant two tier 3 dens relatively close to the touchstone because depending on your RNG, your world might reset before you can get a spider queen if you just haunt one of them. So with your 25 silk, upgrade an existing den to tier 3, then destroy it to get the spider eggs, and then plant both spider eggs near the touchstone and upgrade them to tier 3. Since I'm taming a beeflow, I feed it a lot of food so that it will continue to tame while I'm a ghost. After you have two tier 3 dens, put your lantern and anything that can be eaten by spiders into your backpack. This means all meats, pigskin, and switcherdoodles, because when you die, all your items will drop onto the ground, which means any meat will be eaten by spiders. After that, unequip your armor and punch both dens to get yourself killed. In ghost form, haunt both dens repeatedly until you get a spider queen. Once you've got a queen, revive yourself at the touchstone, befriend a bunch of spiders, and then use them to attack the queen. The spider queen will not spawn nurses unless she is hurt, so you want to damage her a lot, but at the same time you don't want to kill her. After she spawns a nurse, befriend it and put it into your inventory. 
Now that we got the spider nurse, you can make many more of them with the nurse switcher doodles. My ideal number of nurses is 9. Other than the spider queen, the strongest spiders only have 400 HP, and each nurse heals for 150. So there's a point at which having more nurses doesn't really benefit your army that much. The next thing we're going to do is Ruins Rush. Before we go down to the caves, you want to make a bunch of nurse switcher doodles. Get a piggyback, craft a golden axe and pickaxe, and if you're not using a beeflo, craft a boomerang and miner's helmet. The boomerang is probably Weber's best weapon, as it allows him to aggro his spiders onto a target from a distance. This is especially useful in the ruins, since it allows you to stay out of harm's way and let your army destroy everything. However, if you have a beeflo, then it's better to not use the boomerang, at least in the ruins, and I'll explain why later. So once you have the nurse switcher doodles, golden axe, and pickaxe, and the piggyback, it's time to head to the caves. Up until this point, we've just been doing the boring stuff. Now it's time to assemble our invincible army that we'll use to steamroll everything. Some people play Weber by befriending tons of normal spiders, fighting things with them until their army dies, and then going back and befriending tons of spiders again. I don't really like to do that, at least when I'm boss rushing with Weber. What I like to do is assemble an army of really strong spiders that are constantly being healed by nurses. This way I'd never have to run away from the fight because all my spiders got killed, and I don't have to spend time and resources to restore my fighting force. To get large quantities of the strongest spiders, we need to go to the Spelagmite biome. For most characters, this biome is really dangerous, as it has battalisks, nightmare creatures that spawn from fissures, and is littered with cave spiders, dangling depth dwellers, and spitters. For Weber, this is the most important biome in the caves, because it gives you access to tons of spitters. While nurses are the best defensive spiders, spitters are by far the best offensive ones. Out of all the spiders, they have by far the highest attack speed, deal 20 damage per hit, and most importantly, they attack at range. Normal spiders have to walk up to their target in order to attack. Since spitters attack at range, they not only initiate attacks faster, but also won't body block each other from the target. They also have 350 HP, meaning they can take a ton of punishment before getting killed. In conclusion, spitters are really good, and while you are in the spalagmite biome, you want to get as many as you can. So blow the webby whistle near spalagmites, and befriend all the spitters. Unfortunately, each spalagmite only has a 33% chance of spawning them. 66% of the time, you'll get a cave spider instead. Cave spiders are better than normal spiders, but with just a little over 200 HP, they are probably the weakest of the spider variants. In other words, you don't want these guys. If you befriend them on accident, you can murder them for their monster meat if you are running low. You can also convert them into nurses with the switcher doodles. Blowing the webby whistle will make the spiders exit the spalagmite. You're pretty much stuck with whatever spiders came out until day. However, if it's daytime, the spiders that came out will go back into their spalagmite after about 10 seconds. If you blow the webby whistle after the spiders go back into their den, the same amount of spiders will appear, but chances are they will be different types. This is because every time spiders exit the spalagmite, the game does a dice roll to determine which type it will be. So if you blow the webby whistle during the day and three cave spiders come out, don't worry, just wait for them to go back into their den, then blow the whistle again. Chances are you will get some spitters the next time. You can keep on doing this until you just get spitters. In addition to spitters, I try and get a bunch of dangling depth dwellers, since they often spawn in the spalagmite biome as well. Dangling depth dwellers are basically white versions of the spider warrior. They aren't nearly as good as spitters, but they are a good addition to your army, because their pounce attack means they'll often be the closest thing to the target. You want them to be the closest thing to the target because they have even more HP than spitters, are easily replaced even if you go back to the surface, but most importantly, they prevent spitters from getting too close to the enemy. When spitters are too close to the target, they stop using their projectile attacks and instead try to bite. The attack speed of their bite is extremely slow, so you want to ensure that they are only using their ranged attack at all times. Anyways, my ideal army would probably be 15% nurses, 15% dangling depth dwellers, and 70% spitters. You by no means have to get that ideal ratio, but you should try and aim for it. After obtaining your army, it's finally time to kill everything. The next objective is the ruins, so go to the muddy biome again and find the lichen. With your army of nurses, spitters, and danglers, you can basically kill an unlimited amount of spell monkeys without any issues. I would, however, wait until nightmare phase to do so, because normal monkeys tend to run away, which can end up splitting your army and ultimately result in some of your spiders dying. This is easily preventable by blowing your webby whistle when you see your army start to split. If you want to kill normal monkeys, also make sure that you fake an attack. If you actually land a hit on them, all the monkeys will aggro onto you instead of your spiders, which means you're going to get showered in sandy draining poop. During Nightmare Phase, you don't have to worry about monkeys splitting up your army, but you do have to make sure that they aggro onto your spider instead of you. So as long as you have a decent sized army, the monkeys can't do anything, and the ground will end up being littered with beard hair, nightmare fuel, and bananas. You can try and pick up the morsels, but you will have to be quick, because your spiders will eat them. In the ruins, your spider army will be almost unbeatable. Deadworms, slurpers, clockwork knights, and bishops stand absolutely no chance. All of these guys will get decimated no matter how many there are. However, there is one mob that you need to watch out for, and that's the Rook. 
The Rook's charge only deals 45 damage to the player, however it does an insane 200 damage to mobs. This means that it will kill any of your spiders in 2 hits. To make matters worse, the charge is an AoE attack, so Rooks can hit tons of spiders with a single charge. A single Rook can be dangerous, but since you have nurses constantly healing your army and insane DPS from spitters, a single Rook is usually not really something to worry about. The problem is that it's not uncommon for multiple Rooks to spawn near each other. If you try to take on two or more Rooks at the same time, there's a good chance your army will get decimated. It's because of this that I would suggest bringing your Beefalo to the ruins. If you're riding a Beefalo, the Rook's charge will only deal 45 damage to it. The Beefalo takes up more space than the player, but more importantly, it's much faster. Therefore, whenever you fight Rooks, you want to try your best to body block their charges with your Beefalo. This is especially true if you're fighting more than one. If your army is fighting something and you suspect a Rook is nearby, you should be ready to intercept the Rook's charge with your Beefalo. If you're about to enter an area where you know there are multiple Rooks, try your best to isolate them, and once your army starts attacking one, just be ready for the other one to come charging in from the darkness. Do this and your army should be able to flatten everything in the ruins, even the dangerous Rooks. When you get to the Labyrinth, you can call down as many Dangling Death Dwellers as you want. Like mentioned before, they're not nearly as good as Spitters, but their pounce attack and high HP makes them decent replacements. If you're riding a Beefalo, make sure not to let your Beefalo wander onto Dangling Depth Dweller webs. Unlike every other spider web in the game, the Dangling Depth Dwellers will actually aggro onto your Beefalo. If you're riding the Beefalo, it's fine. Just make sure not to let it stand on the webs while it's dismounted. It's also safe for your Beefalo to walk on the webs if you've blown the webby whistle beforehand. Anyways, since you're Webber, the Labyrinth should be a walk in the park for you kill any clockworks that you come across until you find the Ancient Guardian. If you are new to the Ancient Guardian fight, I cover it in better detail in my How to be an S tier West video. The Ancient Guardian is a complete joke against Weber. All you need to do is initiate one attack against him and then sit back as he helplessly gets melted by your army. If you get really unlucky and lots of tentacles spawn, it's possible for you to lose a spider or two. You can prevent this by blowing your webby whistle to call your army away and then re-aggro them once they're in a safer spot. But most of the time that doesn't happen. Instead, you just sit there for about 30 seconds and profit. The hardest part of this fight is honestly getting your spiders to not eat the Guardian's horn, so be prepared to blow your whistle as soon as you see the Guardian drop dead. After he's dead, do a quick pass around the large ornate chest to get rid of any tentacles and get all the loot. You can decide what loot to take and what to leave. For me, I like to leave the ruins with one or two star callers, one Magi, the Lazy Explorer, a construction amulet, and as many Thulocyte crowns as I can craft. Oh yeah, you will also be needing to make a pickaxe in order to fight the Nightmare Wear Pig. So upgrade a pseudoscience station or locate the completed one and craft all of that, and then get out. Chances are you've come across the Nightmare Wear Pig on your way to the ruins. You've got your army and the pickaxe, which is all you need for the fight. Free him by vibrating the three pillars at the same time. This might be hard with the piggyback, so drop it and use the magic if you have one. Lower your sanity by either standing in the darkness, using the Starcaller Staff, or eating Lycan and Glowberries, and kill the Shadelings in order to start the fight. This fight is almost as easy as the Ancient Guardian fight. Once your spiders start attacking this dude, he's as good as dead. The problem is that if you don't have the Boomerang, you're going to have to fake an attack on this guy, which means getting close to him. The Nightmare Wear Pig's Lunge and Smash Attack will both knock you off your Beefalo, which means you have to be really careful not to get hit by these if you're riding one. After your spiders have started to attack him, you can just sit back and let him get slaughtered, or you can go for the Dreadstone. If you want the Dreadstone, you're going to have to call them off with the Whistle as soon as he gets into the Smashing phase. He'll be in this phase when his HP is in between 5000 and 3000. If you have the ideal army, your spiders will be dealing insane DPS, so you have to call them off quick. Call them off and then lure him into Smashing the Pillar. I'd re-aggro my horde onto him after every pillar smash, because doing this will cause your nurses to heal everything back up to full HP. Either way, this boss doesn't stand a chance against your army, and you'll beat him with almost zero difficulty. After this, you gotta head back up to the surface. This is going to be the hardest part of your journey in the caves, because your spiders will not follow you. The only way to bring them to the surface is by putting them into your inventory. In addition to this, if you're on the surface and it's daytime, all your spiders that you didn't create with a switcher doodle or didn't put into your inventory will disappear back into their dens. To prevent this, I make a bunch of backpacks and just put all the spiders into them. I also drop almost everything from my inventory except the things that spiders eat, like meat. Fill my inventory with spiders, including my piggyback, exit the caves, and drop them off at the surface. After doing this, I go back down to the caves and repeat this until all my spiders are on the surface. In addition to putting spiders into backpacks, you should also know that if your spiders are not near the cave entrance when you switch shards, they will no longer be befriended to you, so make sure that they are all closely gathered around the cave entrance. If you're doing this in multiplayer, if another player gets close enough to your spiders and loads them onto his screen while you're in another shard, then the spiders will again no longer be befriended. So tell your teammates to stay away from the cave entrance until you're done hopping back and forth, unless they want to deal with an army of hostile spitters, nurses, and dang depth dwellers. After this long process, you've finally done it. Now you can take over the surface world as well. The first boss on our list will be the shadow chest pieces. If you did this right, you should be out in the caves before the night of day 21. For this fight, the boomerang will really come in handy. 
you should also be sure to have a somewhat fresh webby whistle because you'll need to use it in case your spiders attack the pieces in the wrong order. Unlike the usual order which is knight, bishop, and rook, since we have an unkillable army of super soldiers, we're going to be taking advantage of that. Therefore we will be fighting the rook first, and then the bishop and then the knight. So when knight falls, feed your beefalo a ton of food, mine the rook statue, and quickly hop on your beefalo. The rook will probably hit you, if not just attack it once to aggro all your spiders onto it. If you have an army like mine, the rook should be dead in less than 5 seconds. The next phase is much trickier since at level 2, both pieces have the ability to panic your spiders. There's nothing you can really do about this, just focus on attacking the bishop and dodging both it and the knight. If you're riding a beeflow, you'll have enough speed to outright dodge the knight, however you'll get hit at least once by the bishop's attacks. Use the webby whistle if your spiders get aggroed onto the knight and just keep dodging and focusing fire on the bishop. Eventually the bishop will be defeated and the knight will go into level 3. Even with the beeflow super speed, the level 3 knight is just too fast and has too much range to be outright avoided. He also hits really hard. So if the bottom of your screen turns red, or you notice that your character makes a comment about your beeflow being low on health, you need to immediately dismount, because there's a good chance it'll die if it gets hit again. Because you might have to dismount your beeflow, you should definitely bring some of the Thulocyte crowns and a melee weapon to the fight. A Thulocyte club or a handbat are good picks, however if none of that is available, you can always use the pickaxe, which does as much damage as Wigfrid's battle spear. Ideally, you shouldn't have to dismount your beeflow though. In fact, if everything goes according to plan, you should be able to beat the knight without being anywhere near it, because you'll be using the boomerang to constantly aggro your spiders onto it from a distance. Even though the knight does 150 damage per hit, he only attacks one target at a time. All of your spiders have over 300 HP, each healing your entire army for 150 HP, so the knight is going to have a really hard time killing any of your minions. The thing that makes him a lot harder than the Nightmare Wear Pig and Ancient Guardian is that he can panic all your spiders when he howls. When this happens, you need to stay the hell away from him. Once you see some of your spiders are no longer panicked, you need to re-aggro your spiders onto him with the boomerang. So continue to fake attacks at him while staying as far away as you can until all your spiders are attacking him again. From what I can tell, his howl is completely RNG. You could get a fight where he never howls once, and you could get a fight where he howls a lot. Either way, just keep your distance and begin to re-aggro your spiders onto him once you see some of them stop panicking. Do that and you should be able to beat him without losing a single spider and without dismounting your beefalo. Or if things don't go as planned and your beefalo goes into the red, dismount it and keep attacking him until all your spiders are aggroed onto him. Your Thulocyte gear, coupled with your nurses, giving you 8 HP per pounce, means you don't have to worry about dying in this fight. Once all your spiders are attacking the knight, you should stop attacking since there is no reason for you to waste Thulocyte crown durability when your horde can easily tank his hits. Anyways, if you do that, you should be able to beat the Shadow Knight, which means you've beaten your first raid boss. We were kind of pressed for time to fight the Shadow Pieces since they need to be summoned on day 21, but now that they've been beaten, you can kind of relax a bit because you have 8 days until the end of day 30, and you pretty much have everything you need in order to beat a bunch of raid bosses. Your army of nurses, Dagnan Depth Dwellers, and Spitters is practically invincible against all non-boss threats, and has such an insane DPS that it melts everything in second. With the boomerang in hand, you can steamroll anything in your path by merely fake attacking it, whether it's killing all the tall birds in the mosaic, all the merms or tentacles in the swamp, all the Mactus camps, or an entire pig village. With the army you've built and the boomerang, Weber can do this with literally zero effort and zero resources. So feel free to go on a rampage while you prepare for the next raid boss fight, which will be Dragonfly. Like mentioned before, if you want to know the basics of the Dragonfly fight, go watch my How to Be an S Tier West video. As Weber, you still want to make a wall with 12 units corner to corner, branching off from both sides of the furthest lava pond. You will definitely need the pan flute for this fight as well. Your army might make it hard to place the walls near the lava ponds because they tend to get in your way. There's no shame in putting everything to sleep using the pan flute in order to make your life easier. You can also lead your army away from the lava ponds and then run back and place a few walls while your army tries to catch up. Regardless, you need to build a wall, so do whatever works best for you. If there are hound mounds near the fight, wipe them all out before starting. Once the hound mounds are clear, the wall is built, you have the pan flute and a webby whistle with at least 25% durability, you're ready to start the fight. Be aware of your spider's pathfinding. Like the larvae, spiders don't perceive lava ponds to be obstacles, and therefore will try to walk right through if it's the shortest distance between them and their target. So make sure to guide them around the walls. To start the fight, run somewhat close to the dragonfly to catch her aggro. Once she starts to chase you, do not hit her or get hit until you and your spiders are on the outside of your walls. Once you are there, then start to attack it. If you've been aiming for the ideal army, which would be about 9 danglers, 9 nurses, and 24 spitters, then you and your army's combined DPS is significantly higher than even Wolfgang. Not only does this almost instantly knock out the dragonfly once your spiders start attacking, but it also means you shouldn't be surprised if you knock her out a second time during the fight. Once she wakes up, she'll go to spawn lava. When she crosses over the wall, you need to immediately blow your pan flute, or else your spiders will try to chase her through the lava ponds and get themselves killed. Wait until she comes back and crosses well over the wall, and then start fighting her again. You need to pay very close attention to her larvae. When her last larvae dies, she'll either enrage or she'll go back to spawning more. 
The normal way to fight Dragonfly is to blow the Pan Flute when she enrages. However, you don't want to do this if you have spitters in your army. This is because even if you blow the Pan Flute, one of your spitters projectiles might hit her and cancel her sleep animation. If this happens, you'll not only have wasted a Pan Flute use, but she'll most likely pull off her triple stomp attack, which will wipe out your entire army. Instead of that, what you want to do is keep an eye on her lave. When she has only one lave left, you want to blow your webby whistle to stop your spiders from attacking, and then blow the pan flute to put her to sleep. Once she's asleep, just wait for her last lave to die, and then fake an attack on her to get your spiders to start attacking her again. If you do this, then you won't have to worry about all your spiders getting blown up. That's pretty much it for the fight, just repeat those steps and you'll win. Try and keep track of how long the fight takes because there's a good chance you'll beat her in under 4 minutes. Since Dragonfly drops meat upon death, get ready to blow the webby whistle once she keels over. With Dragonfly dead, that makes two raid bosses. The next one will be Kloss. I think many people think Kloss is a bad matchup for Weber, mainly because his freezing and especially his fire spells really shut down your spiders. In reality, Weber is probably the best character at fighting him, at least in his first phase. You just need a boomerang, a fresh webby whistle, and knowledge regarding how the gem deer's spell targeting works. When Kloss raises his hand in the air, the gem deer will soon begin to cast their spell. When they begin the spell casting animation, they will target all players in the vicinity and all creatures that are aggroed onto either Klaus or the deer themselves. Since the webby whistle de-aggroes all your spiders, all you need to do is make sure to blow the webby whistle before the gem deer begin their spell casting animation. If you do this successfully, then the only thing they will target is you. After they begin to cast their spell, you can re-aggro your spiders onto Klaus. When Klaus first appears, I would aggro my spiders onto him, let him get in one swipe attack, blow the whistle, and then get close to him and bait out a spell. Once his deer begin the cast, I'd immediately aggro my spiders back onto him. Unless you take a long time to re-aggro your spiders onto Kloss, all you need to do is aggro your spiders onto him by faking an attack with the boomerang and wait for him to do two sets of swipes. After the second set, immediately blow the webby whistle, bait out the spell, and re-aggro them once the deer begin the cast. Do this and Kloss will go down ridiculously quickly. Unfortunately, the second phase is not so easy. Unlike in phase one, phase two Kloss gains the ability to panic your spiders whenever he screams. He screams before every pounce and will sometimes scream without pouncing. Due to the fact that he screams so often, strategically using your spiders like in phase 1 isn't really an option. So I just fight him in phase 2 the normal way. If you don't know how to do this, I cover it in my How to be an S tier West video. Your spiders will probably get a bunch of hits in here and there, but they'll spend most of their time either panicked, frozen, or on fire. Fortunately, none of them will probably die, as long as you keep Klaus's aggro onto yourself. It's unfortunate that you can't have a completely clean Klaus fight as Weber, but at least he only has 5000 HP in his second phase, so you should still be able to beat him relatively quickly. With Klaus dead, you've killed 3 raid bosses. It's time to beat the raid boss that Weber is most famous for, B-Queen. Like all the other bosses we fought, you pretty much don't need anything other than your army, a boomerang, and the webby whistle. This is not a need, but it will help to have either a miner's hat, moggles, or use multiple star color staff charges in order to light up the entire arena. Unlike Dragonfly, Kloss, and the chess pieces, Bee Queen tends to fly around a lot, so if you end up fighting her in the dark, it will be really hard to aggro your spiders onto her. It also helps to ride a bee flow, because your super speed means you can outrun Bee Queen and her grumbles while being able to position your spiders better. Anyways, when you're ready, hammer the hive to start the fight. She'll immediately screech, which will panic all your spiders. However, in phase 1 and 2, she will only do this at the very start of the phase. So once they have calmed down, re-aggro them onto Bee Queen, and just sit back while they destroy her. The second time she screams indicates that she's in phase 2, and will now summon more Grumble Bees. However, it makes no difference, because once you re-aggro your spiders onto Bee Queen, both her and her Grumble Bees simply cannot outdamage the amount of healing your nurses are dishing out. The only way you'll lose spiders is if they stray away from the group to fight Grumble Bees. Straying away from the group means that they won't be able to get heals from the nurses. If this happens, just pick them up and place them back into the group. If too many are aggroed onto Grumble Bees, blow the webby whistle and re-aggro your army onto Bee Queen with the boomerang. Her third scream indicates that she has entered phase 3, and this is where things get a little messy. In phase 3 and 4, she will now scream at her Grumble Bees, which gives them a massive speed boost. The speed boost is not the issue, because they still can't catch you on a beeflo, and their damage still gets outhealed by nurses. The problem is your spiders panicking. Since your nurses are panicked, they can't heal the rest of your army. This means that you will actually lose spiders in this phase. So when she starts screaming, you basically need to run circles around her to avoid the Grumble Bees, and then once she stops screaming, immediately begin faking attacks at her with the boomerang until all your spiders are re -aggro. It's a bit sad that you will lose spiders in these phases, but the good thing is that you only lose about one spider per scream. And if you've got the ideal army, the sheer numbers of your army coupled with the high DPS of spitters means your spiders will probably be dealing around 2000 HP worth of damage in between screams in phase 3, and 1000 in phase 4, since she screams more often in 4. This means you'll only lose around 6-7 to seven spiders in the fight, which is pretty good considering you'll still have a really potent army. 
If you want to be really cool, you can try and protect your spiders from her panic in these phases by immediately blowing the webby whistle whenever she flies away. In phase 3, she will almost always move away from your horde before starting a scream. If you're fast enough with a webby whistle, you can keep your horde out of her screams AOE and instead have them fight her grumbles which prevents them from being killed. Once she stops screaming, immediately aggro them onto her and repeat. In phase 4, she screams more frequently, so there's a decent chance that instead of running away from your spiders and then screaming, she'll just immediately scream. If that happens, there's nothing you can really do. Just outrun the grumble bees and aggro your spiders onto her when she's finished. With the queen dead, the next raid boss that you should set your sights on is the Twins of Terror. Now the twins are a horrible matchup for Weber because each twin has an extremely hard hitting AoE attack that will two shot even your strongest spiders. It is risky to fight them with your spider army. If you don't feel up for the risk, skip to the part of the video that tells you how to put them away. However, if you are up for the challenge, then this is how to fight them with Weber. The key to protecting your spiders is the pan flute. When the twins are summoned, you do what you normally do and put both of them to sleep. Blow your webby whistle to wake your spiders up and then aggro your spiders onto the green one first. When you're fighting the twins, your number one goal is to keep the twins aggroed onto you rather than your spiders. So make sure you try your absolute best to get the first attack on the twins after they complete their charge, and continue attacking until the very last second. Lead the green twin away from the red one, so that you only have to deal with one at a time. If you notice that the twin you are fighting has shifted its focus from you to your spiders, you need to immediately use the pan flute to put everything to sleep. It's possible that a stray spitter bullet may have hit the twin, and cause it to wake up. If this happens, just use the pan flute again. After everything is asleep, wake your spiders up with the webby whistle and start attacking the twin. Always try to lead the twin away from the other twin and away from your spiders. The most dangerous part of this fight is when the green twin goes into phase two and starts rapidly dashing because this can easily take out all your spiders before you can save them with the flute. If you want to be on the safe side, just abuse the pan flute and put it to sleep when it's about to dash. Blow the whistle and then wait 10 seconds or until it's about to wake up and then attack it. If you let it sleep for a while, when it wakes up, it will not immediately start dashing. Instead, it will probably spawn a few suspicious peepers and roar which will allow your army to bring it to zero. Once the green one is defeated, you can move on to the red one. The red one isn't as dangerous since it charges slower, allowing you to properly react with the pan flute if you see it switch focus to your spiders. Just do the same thing as you did against the green one, and you'll win. Don't be surprised if you lose a bunch of spiders even if you did everything perfectly. The twins are a hard counter to Weber's playstyle, so just beating it with your army intact is a huge win. Anyways, it should now be close to day 30, which means it's Deerclops time. Deerclops has a high damaging AoE attack that will also freeze your army, so if you just fake an attack with your boomerang, you'll end up sending your army to their deaths. All you really need to do to beat Deerclops is to counter its freeze. To do this, lure Deerclops to you and light a tree on fire. Get him as close as you can to the tree and then aggro your mob onto him. The fire from the tree will defrost all your spiders and Deerclops attacks so slowly that your nurses will be able to outheal his damage. You can help your army out or sit back and watch. Just make sure to blow the webby whistle as soon as you see Deerclops die so your spiders won't eat the loot. With Deerclops dead, it's now day 30 and you've beaten Bee Queen, Dragonfly, the Twins of Terror, Kloss, the Shadow Chess Pieces, the Ancient Guardian, Nightmare Werepig, and Deerclops with one army of strong spider variants. Now that you're done killing all the bosses, you want to set up an area where you can put your spiders away. To do this, you want to wall off a piece of pigskin. Plant a spider den near the wall, upgrade it to at least level 2, and decorate it using the den decorating set. Walling off pigskin will be the hardest part since your spiders will instantly try to eat it as soon as you drop it on the ground. The best way to do this in my opinion is to blow the pan flute, drop the pigskin, and complete the wall before your spiders wake up. Make sure to build the walls face to face and not edge to edge. Once you put your spiders away, they will be packed really tight against the wall. A wall built corner to corner sometimes allows mobs to slip through. After you're done with the wall, you should plant spider eggs close to it, but not flush. If you plant the eggs too close, it's possible for a spider to slip through the wall when they exit the den. You should also plant the eggs during the day, since spiders won't leave the den until dusk, and you want to upgrade the den to tier 2 before using the den decorating set. After upgrading the den and decorating it, you're basically done. Now whenever you are tired of having a massive horde of spiders around you, you can bring them to the setup and use a shoebox. Doing this will unfriend all your spiders so they will no longer be following you. Your unfriended spiders will be attracted to the walled off pigskin, and the decorated tier 2 spider den will keep them in their smiling state, which prevents them from attacking the wall. The end result of all this is your spiders being permanently fixed to the setup, letting you move around freely in the world until you decide you need them again, in which case you just have to befriend them with meat or eggs. There are a few things that you should be aware of regarding the setup. The first is Weber will typically have a large setup of spider nests for farming monster meat via spider wars. You want to make sure that you place these spider nests very far away from your park spiders. This is because your park spiders will try to join the spider war if it's happening too close. In addition to that, if one of the spiders from the decorated den gets attacked, the decorations fall off, which means all your park spiders will start attacking the stone wall. 
So not only do you have to keep your spider wars far away from the park spiders, but you also want to make sure that the area is clear of things that would attack your spiders. This includes pig houses, mosquitoes, bees, hounds, and beefalo. Just keep that in mind when choosing a location for the setup. And that's in my opinion how to be an S tier Weber. Weber can beat more bosses with using spiders, it's just that for the rest of them, it takes a little bit more prep. To beat Toadstool, you'll have to get ice staffs, weather panes or glass axes, a fresh pan flute, befriend a bunch of spiders from the caves, and place a rock lobster next to the fight. It doesn't really make sense to beat Crab King before getting Pearl's Pearl, and reliably locating him means you have to do the Moonstone event, go to the Lunar Island, and dig up two Celestial Tribunes. When it comes to Fuel Weaver, you can get to the fight pretty quickly since you've beaten Ancient Guardian and the Shadow Chest pieces. However, the only reliable way I know how to beat him is with the Brightshade Staff, something that you can only get after beating Celestial Champion. I may cover these fights in future videos, but it wouldn't make sense to include them in this one, because you're going to be well into spring, summer, or even year 2 before you beat these guys. Celestial Champion is the only raid boss in the game in which I don't think spiders are viable, so just don't fight them with spiders because they'll get annihilated. So yeah, that's the end of this extremely long video. I hope you enjoyed it, and for all my fellow Weber mains, I hope this will inspire you to bully all the bosses with your army of super soldiers. Like always, thanks for watching, take care and have a great day. Yeah.